Hello, everyone, and welcome back to FNTV right here in Barcelona, the city that is trying to steal the title of the Windy City. Well, I am so happy to be joined now by Ting Fang Ji of Qualcomm, and we're going to talk about 6G, we're going to talk about AI and wireless networks and IoT. Ting Fang, great to see you. Thanks for coming to see us today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, I wanted to really dig into the role of AI as we move forward with our standards. So as we go from 5G to 6G, how do you see the role of AI evolving? Are there any particular challenges we should be thinking about? That's a great question. I think uh, in the AI is the buzzword of the day for sure. And uh, even in 5G, we have been you know, trying to define AI in two aspects, both in using AI to optimize the network and putting AI into the actual AI interface. You mentioned challenges. Yes, there are challenges, but challenges are also opportunities. So I actually see it as a great opportunity for anyone who wants to make a difference in 6G. You know, it's not an easy problem to solve. So actually, this is a, a great opportunity. One of the challenges that we have uh, in implementing AI is you, need to, you do need compute, right? To, for AI to work, you need data and you need to compute. So uh, in 5G, of course, we can implement uh, our solutions with data collection and with uh, um, adding additional compute into the devices and into the network. When 6G comes, when AI become a native part of the air interface, then you can plan it ahead of time, right? Not like I already deployed my network. Hey, to add AI, I have to add more compute. Now, from day one, you integrate compute into your network and you integrate the compute into your modem and your device. So I think that's sort of um, uh, from commercialization perspective, that's the biggest challenge. Okay. Technically, of course, AI have to compute, compete with the traditional or classic designs, which is model-based, not data-based. So far, we've seen quite a bit of gains in some of like uh, channel state feedback. It's uh, very technical. It's uh, uh, something called MIMO, multiple input, multiple output technology, in millimeter wave technology, positioning technology, new services, mobility. So there are many topics that uh, uh, AI can help address. And in yeah. 6G, there's a potential and there's challenges uh, to make it happen. But uh, we're super excited about it. Absolutely. And of course, you know, we've been talking as an industry about IoT for a while. But as we move on to 6G, surely there are some opportunities, as you say, or challenges perhaps as well. IoT is a must-have uh, for 6G, right? In 5G, we talk about IoT. We talk about the mission-critical IoT. We talk about massive IoT. The technology is there, but the adoption is not the greatest, right? So everyone has some disappointment uh, because what we realize is IoT, communication part of IoT is just one piece of the puzzle. Um, now, with experience and lessons we learned from 5G, we identified many issues we can solve in 6G. So one of the uh, solution we have is to make sure 6G IoT is both backward compatible and forward compatible. What that means is you deploy IoT device, it can last for 20 years. You don't worry about they have to rip it out, the network support and everything. So this technology in terms of compatibility is one thing. The second one is we're going to bake the IoT technology into our smartphone. What that means is you don't have to, after roll out your 6G network, oh, I need to add another network to support IoT. No. The network you rolled out for smartphone, for enhanced mobile broadband, can natively support IoT as well. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of opportunities to do something different and more efficient cost-effective in terms of support of IoT in 6G. Very exciting. Now, to close out here, I wanted to ask you, in the now, uh, obviously, as you said, AI is, the, is the, the topic of the day. How can AI be used now today with existing networks to better uh, automate them and, and optimize them? That's a great question. Um, we are, yeah, 6G is still a few years away. Uh, there are so many things we can do already. Uh, with AI. Um, of course, everyone probably heard about the on-device AI that's on all the you know, great Snapdragon yeah. uh, you know, chipsets. And also, hybrid AI is the next big thing, right? Because although on-device, we can handle a lot of AI workload, but AI can also be hybrid. You can have the workload being uh, optimally distributed between the device 
and the network. So that's AI application, but AI can itself can also be used to make sure the scheduling, the load balancing, the mobility, and the management of the uh, RAN, radio area network, is efficient. Mm -hmm. And make sure you can predict the traffic, you can diagnose um, you know, issues, the faults that you're going to see. So there are a lot of innovations that's happening to using, you know, in terms of using AI to make current 5G network better. And Qualcomm, we do have some business in it, so we're working with our partners uh, in terms of uh, how to use AI to make 5G network run smoothly, more efficient, and uh, you know, create more value. I'm sure, and it's always great to hear everything that you guys are working on. Listen, Ting Feng, thank you so much for dropping by our studio. I'm sure it's a very busy week, and these are big topics, and you've done a great job of explaining them to us in just a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. appreciate it.